G'day guys. Before I get started, I just want to give a giant shout out to Chris from Ancient DOS Games. Uh, since he had me appear on his Patreon milestone video, I've gained about 90 new subscribers, which is just awesome. So thanks very much, Chris, and hi there to all my new subscribers. So uh, today we're going to have a look at my favorite portable computer in my collection. It's the Toshiba T3200 Portable. Uh, it was released in 1987 uh, and gave you just about a complete AT desktop uh, solution in a, well, in an allegedly portable 19 pound package. Uh, it came out at a time when there were still a couple of different ideas about how to do uh, portable computers. There were units like the Zenith Z171 and Compact Portable 3, uh, which took on a lunchbox kind of appearance uh, where the system sat vertically on the desk with the screen on the wide side and a keyboard that either folded down or detached. Uh, then there were the more familiar clamshell style, um, so more like a modern laptop, uh, like the Zenith Turbo Sport 286 and this system, the Toshiba T3200. One of the things that set the Toshiba apart from its contemporaries was how expandable it was. Right there in the back of the system are one 8-bit and one 16-bit ISA slot. At the time, most other systems either didn't have that at all or offered some sort of clumsy backpack or expansion pack uh, that you had to clip on to then have some ISA slots to deal with. The other key feature was the gas plasma display. Uh, a lot of the T3200's contemporaries had LCD displays, which at the time offered pretty lousy contrast and really terrible ghosting. The orange gas plasma display is very bright and has good contrast and updates like almost as fast as the CRT. Uh, finally, the T3200 had an EGA graphics chip, where most of its contemporaries only offered CGA, uh, so more colours and higher resolution. Um, I'm just showing uh, scans from a 1988 edition of PC Magazine. Uh, just showing the Toshiba and how it compares to some of the other systems that were available at the time. It was definitely, well, I think it's the second or third highest system in this roundup, uh, but it definitely comes to the table with the specs. Under the hood, there's a 286 processor uh, at 12 megahertz, which you can toggle down to six with a key combination. Uh, it comes with one meg of RAM, which can be expanded to four megs. Uh, onboard EGA, um, a built-in 40 meg hard drive uh, with a proprietary interface, unfortunately, uh, and a 720k floppy drive. The hard drive in mine wasn't working very well when I received mine, so I did a little bit of an upgrade, uh, but more on that later. Uh, on the outside, there's this lovely 9.5 inch gas plasma display, um, a bunch of LEDs for status, uh, and a very nice keyboard. It's uh, got full travel keys, um, it's not got quite as many keys as a full-size keyboard, but all the functions are accessible. Uh, there's dip switches on the back here that change all the settings, next to normal serial and parallel ports, and a connector for an external EGA monitor. The power supply is built in. You don't need to lug around an extra power brick. Unfortunately, uh, that means that the system doesn't run on batteries. Now I'd like to fire the system up and give you a look at it running, but there's just one small problem. Unfortunately, the panel's a bit shot. Uh, you can see these lines and stuff going on. Um, but what just happens that through the magic of eBay, I was able to locate a new panel. Yay. So let's get started on replacing this bad boy. Okay, so first thing, the sticker has to come off. And then these two screws come out. The next thing is that the front bezel actually just snaps off. Revealing the panel. Next, the 
panel itself comes out. lifts out like so. This connector comes off. This connector comes off. And this connector unlatches freeing the panel like so. Alright, here's the new panel. We can just set it in place and uh, give it a test run. Alright, moment of truth. Well, that definitely looks much better. There's a little vertical sort of artifact here. But that could just be down to a bit of dust or a bit of, uh, a bit of dirt or something. Yeah. I'm pretty happy with that. Pretty happy indeed. Let's put it back together. Okay, so now that we've fixed the screen, we know a little bit about the system, let's power it up and check it out. And there we go. So as you saw, there was one meg of RAM installed, uh, and you also will have noticed that there was a SCSI card installed in there. Um, that's an Adaptex SCSI card that's running the 4.3 gigabyte hard drive uh, that I've installed in there. Because as I said earlier, the stock 40 meg hard drive had sort of packed it in. Later on, we'll take the system apart, and I'll show you how I've actually implemented that. One of the things that I mentioned earlier about the gas plasma display is that it has a very fast update compared to uh, LCD screens that were available at the time. Uh, so I'll just do a quick demonstration of that. And now you've seen that scrolling past nice and quickly uh, with no blurring or ghosting going on. So apart from the upgraded hard drive, the other enhancement that I've installed uh, is a Sound Blaster 1.5 with the CMS Game Blaster chips installed. So let's have a look at those quickly.
This seems like uh, as good a time as any to show off one of my most recent purchases. It's a brand new sealed inbox copy of x Gold 3. Doesn't get much better than that. So, let's crack it open and install it. <laughs> the manuals are still sealed and everything. Awesome. Brand new discs. Okay, disc one. Oh no, I can't read it. See, even though the graphics strip is EGA, the gas plasma display only supports four shades of orange. So um, Toshiba helpfully provides utility to get around this. So let's exit and let's start XChad, I think is what it's called. Yep, and try that again. Now I believe it's control Right. There we go. This gives us a listing of the EGA colors down there and which orange shade they're using down here. I'm pretty sure that the little chevrons there are marking which colors are actually in use. So, yeah, there we go. And just fiddle with that until it's all readable. All right, now we can continue with the installation. Hmm, can't read that. Hmm, might just have to use that as a happy medium. So CX3 Gold, install that, do that, 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 don't want it to start automatically. And let's use day, month, year. Install all viewers, that sounds good to me. Alright, disk two. Okay, disk three. All right. 
that all done. Let's fire it up. Oh, that's a bit hard to read. But uh, instead of uh, trying to fix it with um, XChad, um, let's just set it up so that it looks good no matter what the color mode is. X3 Gold has a monochrome setup, I think. So let's just check that out. go easy as so uh, that's extra gold finally uh, I'll just run through how I've got the hard drive installed uh, the original hard drive was double height this one's only half height but I decided to install it up on spaces because otherwise the motherboard interferes with where the ribbon cable would connect from there, the cable goes under the hard drive, turns 90 degrees, snakes over this little platform here, and then disappears under the power supply. It reappears back here in the expansion card area, and connects neatly to the SCSI card. Uh, it took me quite a few hours to come up with this, uh, but I think it's a neat solution, um, and it's definitely better than no hard drive at all. Well, there you go. That's just a little review slash demonstration um, of my Toshiba T3200 and I look at installing X3 Gold, um, which, I don't know, I just think that that's pretty cool. <laughs> so uh, thanks for watching, um, and once again a huge thanks um, to Chris and a big hi to all of my new subscribers, and uh, a thanks to all of my existing subscribers, of course, and uh, see you next time.